we're going to reconvene our regular monthly meeting. Uh, Dr. Head, do you have any introductions or a special guest? Yeah, uh, Helen, if you could come up. We received an award for our cultural um, awareness, for our cultural awareness programs, and so, Helen. <clears throat> I am so happy to be here tonight to share with you the news that we won an Aussie award that, uh, last month. Uh, Deb Esparza and Alicia Friday and Melissa Hinshaw from Organizational Development went to the Accountability Plus, this bleh, Accountability Plus Symposium in DC a couple of weeks ago, and they served on a panel, and I'll talk about that in a bit. As you know, we've been working uh, with Partners in Leadership on our LSC 2020 Cultural transformation program project to align our culture with our, um, to come with a culture of accountability to align with our strategic goals, the five strategic goals that uh, you see in front of you that you saw in the budget workshop. And Partners in Leadership are the authors of the best-selling book, Change the Culture, Change the Game, that is part of what we're using to change the culture here at LSC. We have so far trained about 30% of our faculty and 72% of our non-faculty. Uh, these people are being trained by Team OD, our organizational development uh, staff, and 20 members of the uh, LSC 2020 Steering Committee, who are system-wide employees who are doing this because they believe in what we're doing. As part of that training, we've asked people to fill out surveys, and we don't have all the results in yet. But so far, 83% of the folks who filled out the survey say they understand their role in reaching our LSC 2020 goals and accountability, and 96% say they're proud to work for Lone Star. I think that's pretty impressive. Uh, when Deb and Melissa and Alicia went to um, DC a couple of weeks ago, they uh, presented on a panel. They talked about our 2020 efforts, uh, the work that our faculty senate presidents did to um, inculcate the 2020 uh, beliefs into our hiring practices. Um, these are the things you'll see when you look for a job, a faculty job at Lone Star College. And they also um, talked about some of our branding efforts. You see some of them here. And here's a really nice example of what they've done at UP. The Aussie Award for uh, Education celebrates organizations to demonstrate ex excellence and accountability, leadership, and culture. This is the first time they've ever given an Aussie award to an educational institution, and we're recognized for our commitment to accountability and student success. And I'd like to ask uh, Team OD <coughs> to stand. We have about half the folks from organizational development here today. There's the leader, Deb Esparza. <laughs> Dr. Lisa, Alicia Friday, Melissa Hinshaw, Ann Money, and Katie Halbert. And they are the team that has been doing this the last couple of years. And they live this. They breed this. I'm very proud of them and very proud of this award that they received on behalf of us. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all. They work very hard, I can tell you that, to um, it's a lot, it looks, it looks easy on paper, doesn't it? It's not, it takes a lot of work to work on our culture. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, Robert Barrera. Robert, if you would stand up. Robert is our new Associate Vice Chancellor for Facilities and Construction. So he has over 25 years experience in construction and facilities. He's worked as a consultant at Rice and Gardner and held leadership positions at SciFair. ISD, Magnolia ISD, Corpus Christi ISD, Houston ISD. So he received a BS in building construction from Texas A&M, and he is reporting to Jennifer uh, Olenek. So we're glad to have you, and he's, um, we've got so many projects underway right now that um, we're glad you're here. And the presidents are glad you're here so their projects can move on. So, so thank you, Robert, glad to have you. Robert, you have to come up and say a few words. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to, but the board chair recommended. Well, I, did, I do want to thank you and, um, and the board and Ms. Olnick. She's, she's accepting an award, of course, and very proud of her, as we all are. Very happy to be here, and uh, I will vouch for, I think it was the 95, 95 96% that 
employees are happy to, to be at Lone Star. I, I was aware of that for many years, and I used to pass by the um, University Park office twice a day on, on my way to uh, south, I just say, or south from, uh, from here, another district. And I thought someday I'd like to work there. But these you know, opportunities don't come up very often, and this one did, and I went after it pretty hard. And I'm very pleased to be here. My family is very pleased to be here. I live in Magnolia, and I've been in this business my entire career, you know, whether construction or facilities or both. So um, I appreciate the opportunity, and thank you very much for that. And Robert, on behalf of the uh, Board of Trustees, yes, welcome to Lone Star. Thank We're you. Blessed to have you. And I think you're going to make an awesome contribution to our community and to our students. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Since he came up, I have to tell you, I was, um, several people interviewed him. I was one of the people that interviewed him. And so when I asked him why he wanted to come to work here, outside of the reputation of the college, he also said he wanted to spend more time with his family, which I thought, okay, <laughs> well, we like, we like people that want to spend more time with their family. I thought, okay. Yes. okay. As long as you balance your life out, which some of us do a better job than others do, but um, I thought that's you know the the actually that's how Mario came to work here. When I asked him, you know, he wanted to come to work here, but he said he wanted to balance his life out a little better. He, I, understand, I understand that. <laughs> he hasn't done a very good job of it, but we're working on that. We try, we try. So what that tells me though is underneath all that, it's a good person. So that's what we're interested in. So. Thank you again. Glad Thank you, Robert. <laughs> no. No. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, we're at the point now we need to approve the amendments of our May 4th, 2017 workshop and regular meeting. Do we have a motion? So moved been moved and properly second that we adopt the minutes of our May 4th meeting. All those in favor of vote by the user sign of aye. 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 Any opposes? And Cal, uh, you want to abstain, right? Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay, Dr. K, we're back to you for any special reports and announcements. Yeah, just a couple of things. The uh, fall enrollment right now is up 16% over this day last year, and that's a as we, as we talked about earlier, that's a good sign. Um, we're working hard over that, on that. So let me just give you a quick update on the state legislative, um, a couple of issues. One is the bachelor's degree passed, the BSN BAT, which is important to us. Now, we're still waiting on the governor's signature, and I didn't hear anything today, although we've reached out. I can tell you we've reached out to the governor's office to make sure there's not any concerns about that right now I think he's he just had a lot of work to do because they they were in the session so we're waiting on the governor's signature so it's not official until um, it, it either it's either approved through not signing or he signs it so we're waiting on that and that was the one major legislative piece there's there's a number of legislation or pieces of legislation that impact community colleges so we'll give you that but that was the one I was the most concerned about. And the money, as I've already mentioned, well, the money, there was a slight increase, but it was very slight for community college appropriations. And that's really if, um, if community college enrollments declined over the state, well, they didn't for us, but over the state. So that's, that accounted for that. The second piece of this is federal legislation. We are, um, and we're, I think some of the board members received that, but we are taking a close look at the new budget proposals from the um, new administration, which will impact us, and we're going to let you know exactly what those impacts are, that impact is, so that we can decide how we want to handle that as the board. It, it requires a little more, when you, when you see that Pell Grants have been reduced, some of that was reduction from not the actual amount, but it's some of the money that they had in reserves that were unspent. So there was about 10 billion, for example, there was 10 billion unspent over the last couple of years, and they want to take 3 billion of that. So it looks like a reduction in the Pell funds. It's not, that's not exactly what that, what that means, but there are specific proposals for reductions in some of the other uh, funds that we would receive, like work study, for example. 
that that is an issue with us. So we'll let you know kind of where we are with that and what we see and how the board can uh, help us with some of that. So. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, board members, do we have anyone who would like to talk about meetings, conferences, or campus visit that they've had over the last month? Any feedback? Uh, I have one small one I would like to mention. And at the gala a month or so ago, we had a young man to speak. He's from North Harris. His name is Josiah. And for those individuals that did not hear him, you really should go back and listen to the tape if one exists. On this past Saturday, he, Josiah and I went to lunch. I invited him to lunch primarily because when he spoke at the gala, he talked about how unsuccessful he was as a student for his first year or so. I don't think he passed many classes. And unlike most folks, he did not blame the system or anybody else. He blamed himself. He went on further to talk about how he has changed his life to now whereby he is a, he's an honor student and a model student. So I wanted to have lunch with him to find it because that's my area of interest, you know, what make people tick, what make a person start over and want to do well. And I said, what happened to you, Josiah, to all of a sudden you have gone from a student that was marginal at best to one of our best students? And he said, I can tell you. He said, it's culture. Where I am from, for a person that's African American, it is not popular to show academic intelligence. So I went all the way through Davis High School just floating because I wanted to be accepted by a crowd. So he made no effort to succeed academically. And I said, well, what turned you around? You know, he mentioned some things that I really don't know much about. He said, I can think of three things that happened to me at North Harris that turned me around. He said, first, it was the ambassador's program. I don't really know what that is in detail. And he said, secondly, there is a group called Brothers to Brothers, or something along those lines. And some kind of way he got involved with being the mascot at North Harris. And all of a sudden, he found an environment and a group of peers that wanted to do the right thing in every aspect of campus life. So all of a sudden, I've always been in favor of extracurricular activity that connects students to the academic side. And I am much more connected to that now to, to where I'm going to be a major advocate for having organizations, activities that students can relate to because that make, makes a difference, and et cetera. I plan to use Josiah as an individual that I plan to do some research on as far as writing a journal article. I'll go through the process of make sure, making sure that it meets the, uh, the requirements of the college. But I want to you know, maybe meet and do a, a qualitative study as a result of uh, Josiah and find other folks that went through the same stuff and kind of capture what made them tick all of a sudden. So Josiah is a great guy. And at the end, he asked, he said, I don't have a family. You know, my family has turned me down. Can I call on you as my mentor when I have questions and et cetera? And I said, well, feel free to do so. So, so I wish all of you could have seen this individual. And we have lots of folks out there like that. So I just wanted to share that with you. Alton? Yes, sir. I've been saving since I've been on the board for the the letters, statements, testimonies mm -hmm. that I've gotten and that we have received from students. Now you have, a, I think they're a wonderful story. And not long ago, Steve was there, we heard Rachel. And my God, you will not believe the tragedies 
that woman had to go through. It's unreal that anybody would have to suffer all that stuff and still have a remarkable performance here at school. And I wrote her yesterday and I said, send me a hard copy of the talk that you gave. I want a hard copy. I've got a bunch of this stuff now. And I'm thinking out loud here. But I would like to consider trying to write a book on this. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Because I, and I don't know if a book would even sell like that because eventually you're just getting one sad story after another. But we have, but they all end up mm -hmm. to be very unsad. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's a book or not. If any of you have any suggestions about that, it would be easy for me to write it because the kids have, all, have already written it. All I have to do is provide transitions or to take the testimony that Alton just gave. But I think there are books there, or a book there, about what an awful lot of our kids have gone through and how they have survived. And they're just wonderful human stories. But I'm open for suggestions as to what, writing for me is very easy. I can do it even without thinking. But if you, if you know what I can do. <laughs> Just, yeah. The title is Long Star Changes, Long Star Changes People's Lives. These, <laughs> these people sometimes are asleep up here. <laughs> I doubt that. No, we got you. <clears throat> we got it. We got it. But writing's very easy for me. And really, I'm serious. If you know what I might do with this, I would be happy to sit down and write a book about this. Well, I might get you to help me write this journal article then. My question is, the ambassador programs and brothers to brothers, does it still exist? Yeah. Those programs, uh, do they still exist, ambassador? Yeah, they, they do. And yes, sir. Uh, the, the first <coughs> program, uh, the ambassador program, we have a program where we use the students to uh, help represent the colleges, provide tours, and they wear nice blazers and nice pants, and, and so they're an official organization. And then brother for brother, we have them both at the centers and on the main campus. And we actually have a large percentage of uh, brother for brother at Lone Star College Victory Center. They're part of the early college high schools. And so they're pretty, they're pretty engaged. And we had an event where we, I think, had about 25 new members earn their red ties a, couple, a month ago. I think everybody has the ambassador program, right? And is North Harris the only college with uh, Brother for Brother. Uh, actually, Benny Lambert started the Brother for Brother program. I'm not sure he started that over at Cypher yet, but it was primarily for African Americans, but Hispanics and Anglos were in there. So it was, yeah, it was for it's males. Small, yeah. It's just one of the many programs we had over at North Harris. So. Okay. Yeah. And, and while we're on that, oh, go ahead. I think he was going to say something. No? Um, I think um, from a uh, perspective of, of reaching out and, and doing outreach. I think, I think that's the key in many respects. Um, you know how uh, advisors can know this very well, college advisors, in that when they reach out to minority students particularly or, or, or uh, um, um, anyone from a lower social economic class will tell you that they never knew a professional, for example. Or they'll tell you, uh, they'll mention that they didn't think, uh, they assumed that everybody who was in, had a Job, a lawyer or a job, whatever, they automatically, and, and I tell you from experience, because I was the same way, you almost assume that they're so different from you. I mean, even, even if they're a minority, too, they, they will, you, you will assume that it's just different from you. So uh, one of the things, I think at the community college level, it is incredible how, how that works, because I think there's many opportunities to have that interface. That, 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 um, so, so as far as, you know, I know many, most of us have heard stories and, and you know, and, 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 you know will make us cry and, and, and understand, know someone who went through that. But let's not forget that the students who are in high school right now, who, who we want them to, to come up and succeed, they, they really don't know. And maybe they, they know somebody that knows somebody. But um, I'm, I just mentioned that because I think we all can contribute towards that, especially we all, if, you know, if we have something to say or offer, we can talk to anyone and don't assume that they, 
they know other kids, other students who, uh, other adults who are professionals like yourself. So I, I just want to say we all can be helping out in that regard. Well, and that's the only reason I mentioned it because for a while I thought some of the things that we do make, didn't make sense, but now I see when you when a student can connect, it's worth a million bucks. Oh, yeah. And so don't sell yourself short. And a little thing you can do to encourage a student changes that person's whole lifestyle. Any other comment from board members about activities? If not, then we will move to the consent agenda. Okay, okay. All right, citizen participation, I'm sorry. We have not, okay, I didn't think so. Okay, all right. Consent agenda. Uh, Pulling item number 12 for consideration separately. Any, any other items need to be pulled be considered separately from the board members? Item 12 has been. Any additional one? If not, I would like to have a motion to on items 1, 2, 1 through 11, 13, and 14. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we uh, approve items 1 through 11, 13, and 14. All those in favor, vote by the usual sign. Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion passed. On item 12, uh, you can find that in your board book, the term of the agreement has been changed. And the term of the agreement will be for one year from June 14, 2017 through June 13, 2018, rather than August 2018, rather than August 1, 2017 through July 31, 2018. Let me repeat that. The term of the agreement on action item 12 should read one year from June 14, 2017 through June 13, 2018. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded that we adopt action item 12. All those in favor, vote by the usual sign. Aye. 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 All right, thank you. financial report okay so um, if you could take a look at there's a couple of charts back there so the next to the bottom tab and um, a couple of couple of major points that Jennifer wanted to make sure and I, I want to make sure you see this so the actual expenditures um, <coughs> percent of the budget continue to trend higher for the same period in prior years and our I think more importantly if you'll take a look at that and then you can look in your on page three the projections for the revenues are coming in at 6.4 million higher than the budget so and if you you'll you'll take a look at that on page three you can see that the uh, taxes are coming in at a uh, higher rate by 8.6 million if I take a look at that number 6.4 million uh, 8.4 million so on page uh, two if you'll take a look at that that's the graph again actual expenditures as a percent of budget and really what we're looking for is to make sure that that's pretty consistent across and you can see we're almost exactly where we were the last uh, 14 15 15 16 16 17 at 62 percent so our expenditures are in line with the same period in prior years. In page three, which is the really the overview of the budget, a couple of things you want to, that you wanted to make sure you were aware of: the uh, months forecasted variance is, is an increase in one-time cash transactions. And if we could go just a little bit down, um, if you would take a look down at the bottom where it says cash transactions and go all the way down so we're we've been <coughs> as part of the cleaning up for the leases over at University Park 
some of those previous expenses were charged against, um, we're trying to restore some of those accounts. So we did a cash transfer of 2.9 million from the lease operations, which is Fund 21, this is what she talked a little bit about before, to the capital projects fund 49, basically we're repaying ourselves. We had borrowed money to do some of the capital projects over there, and we're putting that back in the proper accounts. So when you go all the way down to the bottom of uh, page three, where you see a, um, there's a FY 2017 one-time cash transactions, that's what that's about. That is a transfer back to ourselves. And Tammy is, so that's that's a three million, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is that we are projecting the year to be at fifteen four in the reserves. We are, if you noticed in the budget, we'll be up at sixteen five early next year. So I think we're we're on track with that. So we are getting all the accounts where they should be and all the dollars in the account that they should be. So that's that. Okay. Anything on buildings and grounds? Nothing outside of what's in the report. Okay. Any future agenda items from board members? Uh, one I'd like to have is from the chair of the uh, chancellor's contract committee that we'll have that on the agenda for the next meeting to report out on. Yes. Okay. And since there are no other agenda items, it is Mr. now. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I just I want to just say something real quick. Um, Mario, I, I was looking at you when I was talking a second ago, and I didn't want to embarrass you, but I'll go ahead and embarrass you. He gave a great commence spe commen commencement speech at the North Harris graduation, and he had to follow the mayor. <laughs> he did a great job. Just want to make, make sure I mentioned that. <laughs> I, I heard about you, Mario. <laughs> you won't believe this, but it is now 640. Meeting's over.